Welcome to Straight No Chaser. So grab a glass and join your host, your girl and BZ, Pastor C, Thin Bad, and the Chief. straight no chaser where we never dilute the issues we only serve the hard stuff it's your girl Ambezi, and as always i'm here with my fabulous co-host pastor c hey hey i am fabulous thank you <laughs> thin bad hello hello and the chief hello so hurt people can hurt people uh-oh Allegations of sexual assault and abuse are always shocking and disgusting, regardless of race, gender, or social status of the suspect. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the suspect was also the victim of of abuse at some point in their lifetime as well. This behavior um, impacts men and women, and as we've recently figured out, children. It often has detrimental effects that potentially impacts the victim, family, and friends for a very long time. So tonight, we are definitely serving top-shelf conversation. We're going to discuss allegations of sexual misconduct by celebrities, specifically our king of R&B in the black community, R. Kelly. Uh Many of us have been riveted to our televisions watching the surviving R. Kelly documentary, including myself. I could not stop watching. The documentary provided several episodes that highlighted incidents involving underage and adult victims. The disturbing themes that have resonated from the series are abuse, isolation, and control. The other very disturbing element is his fondness for preying on underage girls. Now, R. Kelly is not the only celebrity to face allegations over the years when it comes to sexual misconduct. Who can forget Bishop Eddie Long, Kevin Spacey, Bill Cosby, Charlie Sheen, Woody Allen, or Les Moonves, among others. Whether you are a hit-making recording artist, TV icon, or head of a major network, sexual assault is abhorrent, shameful, and criminal. So joining us tonight to help make any sense of this R. Kelly documentary is our special guest, Mr. Kevin Powell. He is one of the most acclaimed political, cultural, and hip-hop voices in America today. Kevin's articles, essays, and blogs have been featured in the New York Times, Washington Post, CNN, NPR, ESPN, Essence, Ebony, and Rolling Stone magazines. He was also a senior writer and founding staff member for Vibe magazine. (laughs) It's a vibe, y'all. This year, Kevin has written British GQ cover stories on Michael B. Jordan and Chadwick Boseman and currently hosts an Apple podcast called One on One with Kevin Powell. So, Kevin, welcome to the show. Welcome, welcome, Kevin. <laughs> How you doing, Kevin? Greetings, greetings to you all. Greetings to you all. <laughs> please excuse the uh, background noise. I'm in New York City in a car trying to hear everything. I hope it's all right. No That's problem. okay. We appreciate you joining us this evening. <laughs> Absolutely. We'll give you a pass, my brother. <laughs> So, uh, thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Of course. So this topic has fired up a lot of people, especially Pastor C, Thin Bat, the Chief, and I. So before we get started and dive into this conversa- conversation, um, let me remind the audience to call us at 702-425-7789 or chat live via Spreaker to share your thoughts. This is going to be a very, very, very interesting and in-depth conversation so we really want to hear what you guys have to say tonight so let's begin with a question and then i'm sure the guys will be jumping in all over this topic so my question is probably the same question that's been floating around and that is how is r kelly able to get away with this and for so long like how was he how was he able to cover this up before this documentary like this well, you know, it, l- let me say this. So you mentioned Vibe magazine. I was working for Quincy Jones's Vibe magazine from 1992 to 1996, and I interviewed a lot of people during that time, Tupac Shakur, Snoop Dogg, a bunch of folks. And one of the people I interviewed was actually Aaliyah, 
Mm -hmm. uh, did one of the first interviews with her. Oh, wow. And she was about 15 years old, as you all know. And wow. um, what I remember from the interview is how much she talked about Robert, as she called R. Kelly, his, real, his, his full first name. And I thought it was very off, you know, mm -hmm. that this young lady was talking about him. And, and, and uh, it wasn't, she didn't mention any romance or the, anything like that, but it felt more than a mentor mentee kind of relationship. Mm. And I remember saying to uh, the folks at Vibe that this is something that's worth looking into. And we were actually one of the first magazines that published, uh, uh, if not the first magazine that published the marriage certificate that, that showed that they actually had gotten married and, wow. and that her age was fake to be 18 or 19 years old. And the thing is, you know, so this is not new. Right. It's been talked about for a long time. You know, people, why, why has this gone on for so long? It's called patriarchy. It's called sexism. It's called a system of oppression, just like racism, a system of oppression protects racist white people. You know, patriarchy, sexism protects us men, no matter who we are. It's not just about R. Kelly, but it's really about all of us. And because there's a whole bunch of people who have been enablers throughout. And it's not just yeah. R. Kelly. I mean, Marvin Gaye was married to a 17-year-old woman. You know, uh, Elvis Presley was dating uh, Priscilla, Priscilla Presley when she was Absolutely. a teenager. Absolutely. You know, uh, Jerry Lee Lewis. We can go through a list of people, you know, who were with underage girls. And it was, it was people looked the other way. And so I literally have heard these stories about R. Kelly for about 22, 23 years. Absolutely. But there's also a conversation we need to have about this obsession with celebrity, with fame, yes. and not forget the fact that we put people on pedestals and right. also the fact that most of, a lot of the women that he preyed on were from poor communities, like the kind of poor community that yep. I come from, where you, you can pay people off and you can, and they're, they're not valued. And then let's be real about it. The lives of black women and black girls are not valued the way right. the lives of white women and white girls are in this country. Right. And so... That's why it was ignored for a long time, which is a lot about us as a people, black men and black women, that we didn't take seriously all these allegations as they were happening. I mean, there's a writer from, the, from one of the Chicago newspapers who has literally been writing about this since the year 2000. That's, you know, I, I wrote about it in Essence Magazine about 10 years ago. I got cursed out by people. Wow. wow. Saying, like, how can you talk about this stuff? Me and some other black uh, put a 20. Google BK Nation R. Kelly petition. That's my organization, our nonprofit. You'll see a petition. Only 2,000 people signed that. There's wow. 300 million people in this country. Wow. You know, there's 40 million black folks in this country. So, you know, that, there's a lot of stuff that has to be unpacked here around systems of oppression, about class and poverty, about obsessions with fame, and then how we enable this functional behavior. And then for me as a historian, I can't ignore the fact that, you know, when you talk about the many things that we see in the black community specifically, and I love our people, I love being black, but there's no mm -hmm. way I can ignore the fact that things like slavery and segregation have had a profound effect on us, and literally a lot of the things that happen we internalize. Yes. And yes. you all say in the, the name of your program, hurt people, uh, hurt other people. This stuff gets passed from generation to generation. Absolutely. And so many of us have experienced violence and abuse and sexual assault in, in different forms. It's all over our communities, but there's also this thing where we don't talk about stuff. And, and that's dangerous. Well, yeah. That's destructive to well, us. Well, you know, and I think this is where we got to, we, we need to get to this. And this is why people are shocked about, you know, surviving R. Kelly. I'm like, this has been happening. Sure. It's all over our communities. Yeah. Well, well, Kevin, you, you've written extensively uh, about uh, R. Kelly, and I know you've I'm done stop things. Stop for a second. I don't want to dominate the conversation. Oh, no, oh, no, 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 you're doing great. <laughs> you're speaking no, our language. That's right. I, I know you've done a lot of work with Vibe Magazine and, and, trying to get this this story out years before it was, I guess, politically correct. But one of the things that I, I've been wondering, because I watched the series, I've watched the first three episodes. I couldn't watch anymore. Uh, you know, as, as a father of two girls, after I saw that same pattern of, of preying on people and, and, and isolating the young ladies from their families and so forth and so on, it was pretty obvious what this guy's about. My question is, I was just really astonished at some of the parents that seemed to miss all of the signs. And I just want to know, mm. did you find that in your research? Because, for example, I remember the one couple from from Florida and, you know, your heart breaks for them. But mm, I just I just can't breaks. imagine that I, I've got a gut feeling something's wrong. And then someone tells me, well, I'm going to put a guardian on your daughter someone I don't know, never met, and then all of a sudden I'm just, okay, that's good for me. Well, let me jump in really quick because I think that in in our guest's opening statement, he he really 
gave us some great um, feedback about the idea of what it means to be a celebrity. And I think that, you know, when it comes to the case of the the parents who are from Florida, whose daughter is still with R. Kelly today, um, it, if you listen to the story, it really is one of those things where, okay, so she texted the parents saying that she was gone or whatever. She was at the hotel room with R. Kelly. She comes downstairs. She tells the parents, oh, well, it was an audition. You're messing this up, blah, 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 blah. And, you know... At first, you could hear in their story, at first they were alarmed because she was at this hotel by herself with R. Kelly, but then after she said that to them, it was almost okay. Then they worked out this deal where she could just be alone with him as long as they had some kind of female, older um, representative from the label with her watching her at all times and stuff. So, you know, it... And these are people who were around when the Aaliyah, when the Aaliyah thing happened. They were around when these trials happened, and yet they still let their daughter be around him. And I guarantee you, if it was some average Joe Schmo, that would not have gone down. Because it was R. Kelly, it's like, okay, well, I know what he, I know what he's done in the past, and I know this hotel situation is a little awkward, but he's R. Kelly. Our daughter's a singer, and he can get her to where she wants to be. So it's like. Th- that those types of things cloud judgment. If you guys want to jump in on yeah, that, you, that's you, my opinion. You, you, if I can say that, you, you, what you what you just said, sister, is so absolutely powerful and brilliant. I've worked in the entertainment industry for a very long time, as long as I've been an activist and working in politics and social justice issues. And celebrity is probably the most valuable commodity that we have in America. There's a massive obsession, and particularly in the last 20, 25 years, it's accelerated because of social media. I mean, yes. we want to know what Kanye's doing, what the Kardashians are doing, what is Justin Bieber doing, what is Jay-Z and Beyonce doing, you know, and, and you're absolutely right. And, and, and we got to talk about class. Let, you know, we're about to celebrate Dr. King's birthday in the next couple of weeks, and let's not forget that he talked about the need for a poor people's campaign at the end of his life, that we cannot afford to abandon poor people, working class people. The people that R. Kelly preyed on the most came from working class poor communities Absolutely. and so you know you're talking about folks that are trying to figure a way out and for a lot of us who come from that environment and i come from that environment we got sports or we got hustling on the streets in some form or fashion Absolutely. or we got the entertainment industry and unless people are presenting alternatives like i was presented an alternative at a certain point like hey kevin powell you can actually be a writer you can do that i didn't know the first 17 years of my life i was like how do i get in entertainment what do i gotta do you know and so that what she said was so powerful because it does cloud your judgment and you're just trying to figure out a way how do we how can we win how can we escape this situation and you will it, it also let's keep in mind as black men and we got to be honest about this we know that there's been a historical attack on black people and Absolutely. black men in a certain kind of way and so when a bar kelly is accused of something I think our brother Iverson or Bill Cosby, yeah. we say, well, that's racism. That's racism that's coming after these brothers because they're successful. And yeah, I would agree that Bill Cosby being in jail means that Harvey Weinstein and Woody Allen and all those white men, Matt Lauer, we go through a long list of them, they should be in jail too. Absolutely. So there, there is yeah. something correct yeah. about that. But at the same time, that doesn't excuse the fact that Bill Cosby and R. Kelly actually did do, do things that clearly are egregious. You know what, what I'm saying? What? And so it's not either or. Both conversations need to happen. Right. Yeah, and I agree. And, and you know, the, the problem that I have is uh, I think all these acts are just horrible. But I totally agree with you, Kevin, that it should be an equally, it, it should be prosecuted equally across the board. Right. Yeah. So whether I'm Kevin Spacey or R. Kelly or, you know, whoever, that if you are facing these types of allegations, I'm talking about years and dozens of people, then you have to stand tall in front of the criminal justice system and, and explain yourself. Sure, uh, sure, sure. I, you know, I I do want to address, you know, what my brother Kevin said and just um, add to that. Um, I'm from the city of Chicago. I have seen um, Mr. Kelly's car at Kenwood High School. I, I, I've seen his car at the McDonald's and who he pray on, who he prayed on, was specific and he was very intentional Mm -hmm. and i'm going to say this that there is a mentality that comes with a survival mode when you're in survival you tend to compromise and you look for a way out Mm -hmm. i grew up in inglewood i grew up in a a city where everybody was trying to find a way 